Welcome to another episode of Game Informer's Test Chamber. Today we're taking a look at uh, a new PlayStation 4 game called Infamous Second Son, the third entry in this series. I'm Andrew Reiner, and I have Joe Juba here. Hey! And then a special guest from Sony Computer Entertainment America. We have producer Greg Phillips. Hello, hello. Hello, sir. Hey. So what are we looking at here? Uh, we are looking at a cutscene where um, Delson Walker has just, or Delson has caught, uh, caught up to fetch a conduit who has power over Neon, uh, can drain Neon lights and do a lot of cool things, some of which um, Delson now has the ability to do, and we'll show in a second. And Delson and Reggie are kind of debating what to do, um, given what they know about her. Um, so Delson's going to have a choice of whether he, you know, tries to uh, corrupt her or redeem her. And so fetch is the woman on the, on the ground. Correct. Okay. And the facial animation is very cool. Are, what was Sucker Punch doing to capture these these performances? Uh, so Sucker Punch was working with a group, a digital domain down in Florida, and they were using kind of some new techniques in um, uh, mocap, particularly on the faces. So the actors would have worn um, all these cameras that helped them capture a lot of the fidelity around the eyes, lips, and nose, so they give a better emotional, well, you get more of the emotional performance coming hmm. out in the characters. Yeah, I think uh, Lucas Arts before they went down, was doing that with uh, 1313. Hmm. Uh, but it looks very cool. And now we just saw sort of one of the moral choice moments here going on too. Uh, can, can you, you explain pick the, evil? Yeah, yeah. You, look, you, you pick the corrupt one. Yeah. Uh, how would this have played out differently if you'd chosen the other option? So if I'd have chosen the other option, you would have seen uh, a different cutscene. Um, there would be a different mission, completely different um, path. Really, that particular choice kind of helps shape what Fetch's role in the story is going forward. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Um, which is a little bit of a twist on things. And Cole is not the protagonist. Cole is not the protagonist. He's, he, unfortunately, spoiler alert, died at the end of Infamous 2, if you know it in a good way. I know, it's <laughs> heartbreaking. Um, I and he since fine this on picks that up, boat. I thought he was okay. <laughs> uh, so who is, who's the new protagonist here? Uh, the new uh, protagonist is Delson Rowe. Delson Rowe is a 24-year-old Native American kid who recently discovered he has powers in a world where people fear those that have powers. And he collects buttons? Um, yes, so. he has a very button-filled jacket. Uh, like the his power in particular rain. allows him to drain powers from other Can conduits we? and use them. Oh, so, I'm hmm. I'm a total at he'd, this point in the game, he just recently acquired uh, Fetch's neon powers. He'd be a good X-Men. So now, could be, yes. Does he have these powers permanently, or is it sort of like a temporary drain thing? Uh, he'll have them permanently, but he has to drain from a power source to kind of recharge them and keep and uh, use them. Okay. So at this point, I have two powers, which I'll show off here: mm -hmm. um, smoke and neon. And the smoke power, if I wanted to get it back, I would have to go drain off a smoke stack. Okay. So in this particular mission, whoops. So uh, you're using neon right now? Yeah. And that's the little uh, graffiti down there at the bottom? Yeah. Oh, man. So you're using dark powers. You just totally uh, annihilated that guy. Yeah. <laughs> so with neon, I'd have the I could have the choice of either. So you okay? You're doing headshots there, but I could see there's good on the legs. Yeah. So, so if, if you shoot them on the legs, will it just trap them? Then it'll subdue them, and if I shoot them in the head, it explodes. Sly them. Cooper. Yes, there's many Sly references <laughs> in here. Sucker Punch <laughs> does lo love themselves some Sly. Oh, you're just wrecking the city. Race yeah. The next one. So can you explain a little bit how, like, what the difference is between, like, like, what are you able to do with neon powers that you can't do with smoke? Is it just sort of a skin on the same kinds of powers, or is, is it a little more different? Uh, there's a lot more different. So each of the power sets kind of has, um, one, a super navigation ability. In the case of neon, it lets me run really fast and up walls and mm. kind of uh, traverse the city. And I'll switch to smoke in a second and kind of show off some of the benefits of smoke. Um, smoke's really good up close and personal, um, does some things differently. Um, yeah, really the up close and personal is probably the big one. I see he's not, still got that cool hover ability there. Yep. Well, he has an ability similar to Cole's hover ability. Let Cole go, Joe. <laughs> he's gone. He's <laughs> he didn't survive on the boat like I thought he did. Okay, so there's smoke. Ah. Oh. It was the lady from How I Met Your Mother with the yellow umbrella, and you just took her out. <laughs> I'm ruthless. Not good to keep things bottled so up. So one thing you probably noticed um, while, we were, while I was going through before is up in the corner, I have um, it's telling me to press down on the D-pad, and it looks like I have a power charged up or mm -hmm. have something charged up. So as I was going through, one of the incentives when I'm playing kind of evil ruthless is to do as much damage as fast as possible. Here's a little trick I like. 
So I did enough damage in kind of a fast enough period of time to build something up, which I'll use now. You may have seen this before. It's called the Orbital Drop. Whoa. I think Cloud summoned this in Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> Wow. It's fun at parties. Um, <laughs> so as I'm going, I, if I do enough damage fast enough without slowing down, I will kind of charge up one of those abilities for use wherever I want in the city. And each of the power sets has one. Um, that was the one for smoke. But and the flip side there is if I, don't, if I slow down or if I don't do um, some, an evil action in a certain period of time, the meter completely times out. So okay. it's like I have to do, you have to move really fast and ruthlessly if you want to be able to charge up these karma bombs gotcha hmm. so it's good for big encounters then. yeah and then if i were playing on the heroic side of things what would end up happening is time wouldn't be the pressure but i would have to play mistake free so if i were to make one mistake accidentally knock down one ped or um take out one guy who surrendered i would lose my oh, entire meter take out the direct oh, okay. tv is that like a bonus thing <laughs> no no fortunately not okay i'll follow your lead All right, so we're on our way to some destination here. Yeah, so in this mission, um, there's a bunch of protesters that are kind of painting Fetch as the um, kind of reason for the world's ills with conduits. So Fetch is taking that kind of personally and using that as an excuse to go after these guys. And that's a dark mission then? Yeah. Okay. Or evil, or what do you call the two sides in, in Infamous um, Second Son? They're, they can be called heroic or, and ruthless, good and evil. Both kind of fit hmm. the bill. So there's one, um, the DUP here have one guy who has powers of their own. Oh! <laughs> and he's using his chain there, right? Like he has chains wrapped around his hand or uh, his wrist. Yeah, so the chain takes on different properties depending on the power. In the case of Kind of Ghost Rider-esque. <laughs> no, we want to like this guy. <laughs> Kratos? Okay, there you yeah, go. Okay, there you go. Uh, so yeah, and going through right. that, I ended up um, charging up another karma bomb. Okay. By taking those guys out and with some ruthless precision. Oh, so now we get to see the neon karma bomb. Uh, you will kind of get to see it. So we're trying to keep a lot of things secret for fans this time around. We haven't been showing as much. Um, I think on Infamous Two, we showed off a lot of the game before release. So this mm. time we're being a little more selective. Hmm. Okay. So um, I will use it, but it's going to have a filter over it so we don't give away all the effects. <laughs> Call it a spoiler filter. Okay. No, that makes Wait, sense. Wait, they built in a spoiler filter into the game? Only for this preview build. Ah, oh, sucker punch. <laughs> you bastards. <laughs> that was awesome. And that is uh, Troy Baker, right? That is Troy Baker. Does he turn into the Joker at one point? He does not. Oh, I missed. Man. Got him. He can really get around the city, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I like the look of the mobility here, but it's, it's, it still has that kind of infamous vibe, too, of the, like, fighting dudes on rooftops and, you know, jumping from place to place and taking care of business. I like that. Kind of makes uh, Cole so look know, like a chump. So you, you see, say, if, if enemies yeah. think they're completely done for, they will surrender. You get the choice whether execute or some. Joe, know. what should he do? Execute them. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Right through the heart. Immediately. Take now, that dumpster. Oh, you think you can get away, do you? I do like that mobility angle there, too, because, like, Cole would do just kind of, like, he just sort of hop up buildings a little bit, and, yeah, that was that, wasn't really that was good for the time, good for him, but, like, I like I like making it a little more super heroic in terms of traversal. Yeah. Now, it's a blast to play. I mean, having been working on this game now uh, for two years, and, mm -hmm. you know, the first time the smoke dash went in, it was great fun. It was just, like, dashing around. It's like, oh, and, like, as I'm going to go into this last part, I'll kind of be playing a lot more up close and personal, so I'm going to switch to the smoke powers, and there's a lot of really cool things you can do with those that I haven't quite shown much of up to this point. And it, this is the first real-world location. This is Seattle, and as you can see, it's rainy. True to, true to form. <laughs> Since these people are getting in my way, well... Me, they all get to die. <laughs> I never said it was a good guy. Can you show us like the skill tree or anything like that? Or are you uh, not is that going to just bring up a weird blur effect or something? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Spoiler not filter. Not in this build. That's something Excuse we're kind of saving for release. Just kills our, our uh, PlayStation 4. Right. Well, at, might, least, actually. at least we don't have to wait long to find out because release is not far off for this. Yep. 21st yeah, what is, uh, uh, this okay. month. Hang in there, I'm coming. Man, you go? just a killer. Yeah, I know. Stone cold. Oops.
Burn our eyeballs out. <laughs> Jeez. Yikes. guys are everywhere. And so, who are these guys we're taking on? These are the DUP. These are kind of um, the world's superhero kind of task force. Okay. Um, so when people with conduits at the end of Infamous 2, obviously the Beast took out the East Coast and everything happened with Cole, um, the world got very scared. It'd be kind of like if Joe here, all of a sudden his hands started glowing and he could punch me through a wall. I probably wouldn't want to stand so close to him. That'd be a good idea. If, um, if Joe did get superpowers, he would go down the evil path. He probably. does it in every game. Yeah, immediately. Probably. So, um, Basically, the world got super very afraid of these people, and that led the government to creating this force, the DUP, which kind of main task in life was to find all conduits and throw them, lock them in jail and throw, throw away the key. So we got about a minute left here. Should we use our superpower? Uh, actually, in here, so the orbital drop, because it needs um, some time to wind up, it needs to have uh, wide space to get up. I can't use that. So these guys are almost dead, so. Okay. Oh. Very cool moves. I like how I could shoot behind him, stuff like that. Oh, and, he surrendered. And in previous inf <laughs> infamous games, like, coal needed to drain electricity and stuff from around. Is there... You you do that with, like, neon and smoke still in the environment also? Correct. So any any, any smoke source or neon source, as you saw, like, these lights in the corner could be right, used right. to get neon. If I blow up a car, I could use that to get oh, yeah, smoke. Oh, okay. So I can get power from anything in the real world that would generate those sources. So walk out real slow and act scared. Yeah, this should be pretty easy for me to do. Thing is, they think they got you trapped, but ha! Ha! And they're mistaken because... Because <laughs> we're smoke guy and laser girl. Yeah. Joke's on them. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Do it! No, oh, he's okay. gonna surrender. Of course he's gonna surrender. He knows he's done wrong. And credits. Okay, maybe <laughs> the, not. the end. Thank you for playing Infamous Boy, Second have you guys Enjoy the, the prison drop food. on me. <laughs> Look at that lighting. Or, you know. Yeah! No, don't cover it up! Or cause loss of destruction real quick. Spoiler filters. I know. He turned into a neon beer sign. The end. <laughs> <laughs> but it does, uh, does do quite a bit of damage. And fun at parties. <laughs> oh, I can't <laughs> wait to see what that effect is. Thank you so much for showing us this, and yep. uh, thank you, Joe. We'll see you next time on Test Chamber.